Well, hello there, guys and girls. It is the B2, and we're going to do a little catch-up today on the Algeria game. That's right. So it's a game I haven't updated in a while, and you can look, and uh, Africa's all green. There is no doubt. But uh, we've got three incredibly active players in here. We have South Africa, who also owns this up here. Uh, not quite there, but like right here, South Africa. They also own a part of Ethiopia. Then you have the Congo, who's come up, and then you have them taking over part of Egypt. We took part of it, and then, of course, Congo is taking up here on the rest as well. Um, what happened is, is uh, Congo and I were eventually going to go after South Africa, but then the three of us ended up teaming up together just to block out um, uh, Africa here, and then uh, South Africa has determined... They're going to go over to Pakistan and come back in from this direction towards Iran on the back side here. Uh, maybe take Pakistan and then move to the left over this way. Uh, Congo is going to come up through Egypt and into Israel and Saudi in that area. And then I am going to go up in the top left and we're going to go up towards uh, France. So you can see the very, very quick po uh, progress within a couple of days. And that's kind of how the game goes. You really, you know, sometimes you need to fight people and sometimes you need to ally with them. And that's the great thing about this game is, is allies are for, forged and broken. Diplomatic relationships can go uh, south very, very quickly. And so if you look at what we have here, uh, we've got four allies now. <laughs> we've got DR Congo. We've got DT Smith, who's actually in my alliance. Um, we joined the game individually and got put into the same game, so it's kind of weird. Like, that was a total random event. Um, and then we have uh, the UK and South Africa. And uh, and just so you know that we're not wolf packing, like, UK and Poland are actually at war with each other. And then I'm at war with France, but allied with the UK. And then um, and then you can even look at this if we pop into the information here. Poland is uh, he's uh, in a fight with the UK. But because... The UK was allied with France, and Poland was already at war with France. If we look at Poland, um, he's at war with the UK and France, and I'm at war with France. So you can just tell, like, there's no wolf packing going on. Uh, we made this end game. I made an end game alliance with the Congo and South Africa just because of the relations on the map. So kind of interesting way to go. Um, and I really, uh, the only place that was left for me was to come up through Portugal and Spain, but UK was already on the way there and I was already allied with them. So I ended up just having to take France, um, as opposed to coming up and trying to go see into, into Italy this way, which is not a bad idea, honestly, to come across from Tunisia, um, hit the islands and take the port cities and then come up through here because you're not going to be able to be attacked by a bunch of other countries. Greece is not going to come after you. Uh, Sarajevo is not going to come after you, and they're typically in a fight already um, with the expanding territories down here. This guy, Turkey's already taken this whole area as well, so he's doing extremely well. But if you look at the overall board again, uh, Turkey's in first. I'm in second with 21 cities. And so we're, we're kind of moving right along. I don't have as many points as Congo. Congo took a whole bunch of points, but they had to split cities with South Africa, who's at 13, Congo who's at 14, and me at 21. So I really had no choice but to come up through here. Oh, here's the other feature that was added, too. I wanted to show you guys this. Um, Conflict of Nations has done a great job, the dev team, at uh, doing some help menu. Now, people have complained in the forums this is a bad location, but it's not. I can open my Cities tab. It doesn't interfere with anything. I can open my market, and that doesn't interfere, not even close. So I think what's happening is people have a low-resolution monitor or something, and the, the screen gets jumbled because I've actually been able to load the game on my phone and iPad, but you just it's not supported, and you really can't do anything on it besides just look at information. Um, but all of my menus and tabs are completely jacked up uh, when I do log in with my iPad. So... So let's take a look. Like we uh, we took the northern part, Bar Barcelona, Toulouse, uh, Bordeaux, and Marseille. Um, I guess Marseille was more this morning, and I've actually gotten. Um, let's see what day it is to so give you guys ideas. So it's been a couple of days. It's day fourteen, so it's been three days, or so. Um, and I've already gotten my uh, my guided missile programs and my cruise missiles, the basalts. Basalts, whatever you call them, bath salts, or basalt from from Summoners War, or whatever. Uh, so actually, anything that pops up on the radar, I can missile and now lock in coordinates to to shoot whatever's around here. Haven't had to do that yet. Only have ten in production. Um, I'm really trying to save up my resources, but you can see I've got a ton of resources here. Um, I'm just low on supplies, man. I cannot get it. So I've been trying to take over cities uh, today, which I did with Paris. 
And then um, I'm not sure if this I'll uh, burn. No, no. Um, I guess the next one would be supplies would be is already taken up here by uh, by the UK. So, um, but we'll boost production a couple of different ways, and maybe we could take a look at that, and I can show you what I'm doing. But um, I've got enough money to take over cities and annex them now. I just don't have enough supplies, man. And we're producing a lot, and we're we're gaining a lot of power. But that's the one thing. So when I go to the market. It seems to me on this update, when we put the markets back in, they're really toned down. And I don't have any factual information for that. I don't have any numbers before and after. But I used to see a whole bunch of stuff in here for like 67, 81, like just random numbers of stuff to buy. And those aren't popping up now. So it's kind of a bummer that uh, I can't get some extras there because I'm, I'm sitting on 100K. You know what I mean? And, uh, and so I always check to see if there are... Um, rare materials and there's not even rare materials and I don't need to buy fuel I'm flush on fuel at 35k I mean I got plenty you know um, I don't need to buy these components because I got 25,000 components sitting around um, I just need the supplies to make them so uh, so as I look like here's kind of how I look at that I pop my cities tab I sort by resource produced and I've got five cities that are producing this so let's look at Algiers can I put arms in nope that's already in I've already got a level 5 arms place so let's look at Constantine I've already got arms in there too arm uh, in the industry let's see a look I'll show you I've got it right here arms industry and it's level 5 of 5 right producing the max the city's a 7 and it's uh, Algiers it's producing 4417 which is respectable I just keep I just keep using them too quick. Uh, so we do have Paris that's going on an annex, and uh, and it does not have any any um, arms industries in it. So at 324, I don't know how high we're going to be able to pump that up, or if we can recover the population from the city. But that's something that we would look to do as well. As far as strategy and tactics and techniques and all that. Um, I don't have anything else to take over down here. I'm going to let UK grab those last two territories. He's just got a Corvette that's been bombing this guy for like three days. It's taken off so little health, but, uh, but over time he'll eventually hit it and just be able to airdrop somebody in there. Um, I think the best way for us is we've got a stronghold here. Uh, they've only got three cities left, but you can see there's nothing in Nantes. And uh, if I move this plane up um, to patrol in Strasbourg, um, you can see that there's nothing on the radar yet, and I don't know if there's going to be anything in this city. We've got um, three fighters at full health, 66 of 66. So anything we run across there to patrol, we'll be able to take out at this point in the game. And we've really just kind of crippled France. So to finish France off at this point of the game would just require that we get somebody out here. Um, I'm waiting for Bordeaux. Uh, we have three and a half hours before the game updates hap happens. And I'm trying to not let this go in. You can see it's an 18% chance of insurgency. So I don't want that to go to rogue state. Um, this one is going to be a lot less, a 13%. So I'm okay with that. Um, Paris, I don't know, 41% is really kind of high. And so I don't really want to start another war somewhere. Um, Mali, we finished off Mali down here. And then uh, Ghana is going to, um, South Africa is going to take Ghana because I don't want to have two wars going on at once, right? And so right now, I just have, if you look, let's, uh, let's scroll back in. And, uh, whoop. Um, sorry, wrong city. Uh, you can tell that it says at war with two nations minus two. So what, am, what else am I at war with here? I don't understand, like, I don't understand what else I'm at war with. Maybe, uh, Maybe Egypt? Let's look. So we are Algeria. Yeah, Egypt. No big deal. No big deal. And we might just fly a plane over there and uh, rack people with a couple of cruise missiles for these guys too, just to make it easier for him to, um, to push through there. So I don't know. It's just hard. Like when you start using missiles around other troops, you'll fire one off. This guy will take the city. Your missile will land. Now you're going to be at war with Congo. Like it's almost not worth it for me to fire a missile in there, but uh, but I will fly and patrol and shoot missiles at like random towns, and every now and then you'll get like a, a unit killed and stuff. So uh, that's one method of doing it. Um, and I can show you that too. Like so, let's say we've got a radar contact out here now. It's going to be in. Uh, it's just an unknown contact that's just got hit by this going on patrol, right? So I don't. 
It might get close enough. Let's give it a couple more seconds. Let's move on and talk about some other stuff real quick, some other highlights, and then I'll figure out. Um, but uh, so what I need, need to do tonight is once 7 o'clock for me, Eastern Standard Time hits, that's when it checks for the rogue insurgents, and it can make your city go into a rogue status or not. Once that hits and I know what I have, what I'll do is I'll set a guy to go take this and add this target, add this target, add this target, and I'll just crisscross all these basic territories all the way around. Um, and what that does is it takes off um, third, $120 a day off of his total. It takes off 22 men. So if you do that times 10 uh, provinces, suddenly this guy's losing 1,100 to 1,200 coins a day, and that adds up. You know, so when you take that stuff away from him, you take the manpower away from him, you take as many of VPs as you can, and you've, in effect, you cripple a country's ability to produce new units. He only has three towns that he can produce from now, Strasbourg, Brussels, and Nantes. So he's severely handicapped against a nation that is producing in 21 towns. So um, if I was Poland, which, uh, which I've messaged him, I was like, hey, man, take these regions real quick because I'm coming in. You know what I mean? I'm coming in hot. And uh, and I'm taking a you know taking swipes at things. So um, let's look now. That radar contact is going to pop to actually what it is, and it's waiting in Strasbourg. I know. So what I'll do is I'll just fire the missile right into Strasbourg, and then uh, I'll fire two, just to make sure that what. Oh uh, no, we only need one. Get it pop to an infantry, and so you can see the cruise missile is launched. It's going to land in six minutes and fifty-seven seconds. All right. So you can see now we've sped up the missile and it's only a minute or so away. Let's get on there like 113, right? But since then, look at this eighth strike wing, right? There's three jets in the strike wing and it's on patrol. So you can see it's hitting this uh, France battalion right there, right? Let's see, it'll, uh, it'll action and show that there's like a little splotch on there from their fighting. It's the 3rd Infantry, there we go, 3rd Infantry Battalion France, M3. Well, when this guy got into his patrol, the first thing that he saw was this unit, and he took a shot, and you can see it's 6 of 15. So, 3, level, I guess it's level 3, fighters. Let's, I can take a look at it real quick before that missile hits. Yeah, see, level 3. We've leveled it up 1, 2, 3 times on there. Um, we'll hit a level 2 infantry and it will do nine damage so three damage per all right so now this missile is going to land in 22 seconds we'll give it a we'll give it a little chance it's going to make a a little explosion and it should take that unit right off the map so here we go here we go give me the countdown 10 9 8 i'm kidding i'm not going to bore you with all those <laughs> all that countdown stuff so here we go three two one and bye bye Fifth conventional cruise missile has defeated third military unit France. Uh, so you can see by getting those to launch from the strike fighters early in the game, uh, by day like what was it, day 16 or something like that, day 14, um, you get an incredible advantage because they do quite a bit of damage. So I'll show you exactly what they do on here. Cruise missile, um, it's it's the uh, first level. It's not even like the super bad dude, real quick. It's a conventional, it's going to do 15 damage. So if that had been in a town that had a bunker in it, and this missile hit, it wouldn't have done the total 15. The bunker would have negated some of that stuff. So um, cannot be controlled once fired. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then it does 40 to tanks. Like, that's a huge. So if you get a tank out in the open field and you hit it with a missile, oh, my goodness, man. But more than that, look at this end-level guy, the two-star boy. He does 90 to tanks and 30 to infantry, so his infantry raised levels. Um, it's not uncommon for me to have like 50 or 60 of these conventional warheads ready to fire off at any time going towards uh, towns and things that pop up on the map. I'll even fire multiples at like any aircraft stuff and just, I mean, anything into cities. Like you'll see missiles on the map wherever I'm at because they are kind of powerful. So, you know, it's another lesson to have like the theater defense and, and the stuff that you would need to shoot down missiles, uh, the SAMs and, and everything else, you know. Um, so anyway, that's what the conventional missile looks like. So for the rest of this, this France um, occupation here, what I really need to do is get these towns settled out. Once these towns get settled, what I'll do is I'll take and I'll move and get the rest of the territories tonight. So let's hope that none of these get hit by the rogue thing on there. So anyway, uh, what's next on the map after that? I really don't know what I'm going to do next. 
Uh, I'm not going to backstab UK. And I'm definitely not going to backstab Poland. So it's looking like I will probably enter into a battle with Italy. Or if Egypt is having trouble down here, because they are going to run into Turkey as well, then I will probably wait until Turkey. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, Turkey will start in on Italy. Because uh, what will happen is Pakistan is going to get taken by South Africa. And this guy will come up. So if I help this guy push in here and get rid of some of Egypt's units, then um, then they can get into Saudi Arabia and get to the peninsula. And, and then they'll be fighting Turkey on the south. This guy will be fighting Turkey on the east. And if I'm able to come in from the west through Italy, then I'll be fighting him on the west. And Turkey will have a three-front front war here soon enough. Um, and even then, like, I'm, good, I'm allied with Poland. So, so, you know, this shouldn't be hard for us to close, zipper up this little border right here. And, uh, and block off Turkey from making an advance. They're the number one per team in the game. I don't feel bad about alliancing against them. If I was in the top spot in a player game that had like nine or ten active players, which we do, I think. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Saudi Arabia. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Thirteen active players in a 26-player map. So I don't feel bad about going after the number one guy. Uh, that's just the way it rolls. And then when I'm the number one guy, I'm pretty sure that like other guys like, like uh, where is it at here? Like these China, uh, Saudi Arabia is an active player, which is going to be interesting. We got to take them out. And Egypt is an AI guy. So anyway, that's the update for Algeria. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please hit me up in the comments. Hala.